Welcome to this video where I'm first going to take you along to two different forests in Jutland near the town of Vipo where I grew up and then into the town of Vipo itself. My daughter and I are visiting my aunt and our second cousin and on the first day there was quite a bit of rain as you can see. This forest is called Undelslundskogen, and though it looks idyllic, there are bunkers here from World War II. We'll get to them in a minute. First, wild mushrooms and a strange looking tree. And more rain. Here's the first of a long line of bunkers and the only one you can enter. I'm not sure what the history books tell us about this area as regards World War II. And since Vibo is about 200 kilometers from the German border, I was surprised to learn that there were so many bunkers here. They look like the kinds of hills that we used to say were inhabited by trolls, but this is not the troll forest that comes later. There's another bunker and another one on either side of the forest path, no less than 28 bunkers in all. But they're nicely camouflaged by all the vegetation that has grown up around them over the past 70 years. I especially like the ferns and the moss. And here we ran for cover because it started buffeting down. Somewhere nearby, they've tried to hide exactly where, 28 Danish soldiers were allegedly executed during the war. Not something you really want to think about when you walk around in a forest like this. The following day we visited the Troll Forest. The sun was out now. This is one of several natural springs in the area around Dolropaga or Dolrop Hills just outside of Vibo. The forest is in and around a gorge formed from glacial streams thousands of years ago. Many of the beech trees here are up to 300 years old. It's called Troll Gorge and Troll Forest because so many of the trees are both old and crooked. It's a natural forest, which means nothing is done to it apart from ensuring its preservation. When branches fall off or a tree dies, they are left in place and not removed. This ensures not only that natural fairy tale look, but also makes room for insects that breed in dead trees or enable smaller animals to create dens. It also meant we had to climb over and under a number of trees in order to follow the path. I love that. Here the forest changed characters, you can tell. It was quite warm, which is why I'm wearing shorts and also trying to swat away flies. there were many sculpture looking branches filled with moss and right about now I lose my sunglasses. I only discovered about 10 minutes later so my daughter and I have to hike back to see if we can find them.
here she comes with my sunglasses. This is the only bit of wildlife we saw that day, a tiny lizard. I didn't even know they existed in Denmark. And this is close by, Heltsø or Helt Lake, with a ruin of an old castle on the far bank there. So today I'm taking you around the town that I grew up in. I went to school here and uh, my parents lived here and are buried here and uh, I'm going to show you some of the sites just briefly and while driving. about uh, 40,000 people living in this town. I lived here when I went to school as a child and, I was, and then I moved to the United States. Then I went to high school when I came back. Then I moved again. But then I kept coming back because my parents lived here and my aunt lives here and she's the one I've been visiting this time around. Vipo is located in the very middle of Jutland and is about 170 kilometers away from Unza where I live. The town was first created during the Viking Age, sometime between the year 900 and 1000. So this is where I used to um, walk back and forth from my high school to the center of town and that shop right there on the right is where I bought, bought my first thrift store dress for a five kroner which is a bit less than a dollar. This is the pedestrian zone and it's the old part of town here as you can perhaps see. here so it's a bit wobbly which you can perhaps tell sorry for the wobbly bit this is a really uh, this is probably the oldest part of the town this is the cathedral the first cathedral that was built here was built in the 1100s and four centuries later, when Martin Luther King had arrived on the religious scene in Germany, it was in Vipo that the Reformation in Denmark first began. That's the, uh, the courthouse and down there, behind there, is uh, actually the prison. And here you can see the cathedral again, which is beautiful and big for the, a town this size. I think the biggest uh, granite church in Europe, or at least in Northern Europe, is pretty huge. And that over there is the museum. There are many listed buildings here, and it's that ambience that I like first of all, but also the lakes and how green and pleasant it is for a town. There's a path there that brings you down to the two lakes that are characteristic of the town when you enter it from the other side. Let's go down that way, down to the lakes and to the other side of them. Another one right there. Huh. There are meters. 
waiting for cool old cars? Possibly. top vibe there. Now this is a crooked hilly road so it's not my camera that's all askew. Here I have to be really careful because I actually had an accident here when I was about 20 years old. Whoops. Pardon me. not condone driving and filming but what am I gonna do okay I'm just gonna drive in here or take a left make a left here I think it's probably safer this is one of the lakes Sunasu. I got out of the car here to give you a closer look at it behind those trees over there is the church where I had my confirmation ages ago in the churchyard is where my parents are buried Here's the church, Esmikyege, which is one of the oldest churches in the country from around the year 1090. You can see the outline of the cathedral up there on the hill. going this way but I will take this way because it's the most scenic route. There we go. So again this is the old part of town. the cathedral now. Let's take a right here so you can see some of the old houses down this way. Oh, there's one for sale. Should be interested in that. Okay, so this one is a dead end. I've no idea which way this goes. Let's try it. Maybe it leads somewhere. This is the courthouse again, the court building. I'm not actually sure that I'm driving the right way here. Oh well. Okay, so this is one way. I'm gonna go down this way. This is the way we went before, but I think that's alright. to my aunt's house now and uh, taking you through these old streets in the center of town. Okay. Yeah, I really have to be careful. I hope this isn't one way in the wrong direction. Cobblestones again. Mm -hmm. 
that rather unattractive building on the other side there, on the left-hand side, is the dorm of the high school that I went to. The high school itself is beautiful. You're going to be able to see maybe part of it as I drive this way. Let me take this off and maybe show you part of it, perhaps. It's a beautiful old building. I lived in the dorm for a year and a half when I moved from the United States back to Denmark. So I hope that was um, all right. Tractor. I hope that was a, an okay little uh, tour around town. Obviously, the best way of exploring this town is on foot. Uh, there are many beautiful little uh, pathways and cobblestone streets you can walk, and it's it's a really pleasant town. And of course, there's much more to it than what I've just shown you here. But this is just a kind of an appetizer. Finishing off with a trip to the cemetery to visit my parents' grave. Thanks so much for watching.